Hi guys, and welcome to Trucking Along with Kiersey. That's me. Today I am going to give you the easiest, easiest tutorial on A2 splits. I use these all the time just because it often allows me to get more loads. Other people will reject loads saying that they don't have enough time on their clock or their 14's not going to allow them to do it or something of that nature. My fleet manager, whom I call affectionately Greedy One Kenobi, he winds up giving me those loads. So this is how you can reduce your stress level if you understand it because you'll know how to actually manipulate your clock to be able to fit in some of those tighter loads. There's a few different ways that I use them and I'll explain a little bit later and explain why I use them. Let's get started. The very first thing that you have to understand is that this is going to take a little bit of time to get used to. And so many people try using an 8-2 split, not when they have time on a load to learn it and understand it. They want to use them when their time is really short. If you don't understand it, you will mess yourself up big time. An 8-2 split is never going to give you a full clock. Only a full 10 will give you a full 11 and a full 14. Only a, a 34 hour break will give you a full 70. If you think that you're going to get a full 10 by doing an 8-2 split, you're not. It splits up your break, but it also splits up the drive clock at the time. The first thing you need to understand is that eight hours straight in the sleeper, at least eight hours straight in a sleeper, is going to pause your 14 clock. You don't need to do a two hour split in conjunction with that. Just doing at least eight hours at any time will pause that 14 clock. You can do nine hours in the sleeper, but it has to be consecutive sleeper time. You can't do seven hours in the sleeper and an hour of off duty. You can't do seven hours and 45 minutes in the sleeper and 15 minutes of off duty. You have to have at least eight straight hours in the sleeper and it will pause your 14 clock. It's essential to understand that because that's the key of how to do this. There's three formulas you need to know. The first one is how do you determine your available drive time? This is so simple. We get 11 hours on our drive clock. The hours you drove between the two breaks, you then subtract from those 11 hours. It doesn't matter if you take the two hours first or the eight hours first. 11 minus however many hours you drove in between the two breaks gives you your available drive time after the break is completed. Meaning if you do eight hours in the sleeper and then you drive for five hours, after your two hour off duty is complete, you will then get 11 minus the five equals six hours of drive time. The two hour break could be off duty or sleeper or any combination of. You could do a half hour of off duty and then an hour and a half in the sleeper, but your Qualcomm will not recognize that you're doing an 8-2 split until both of your breaks are complete. Now when it comes to determining your 14 hour clock, most people understand if you do the 8 sleeper first because all you do is add 14 hours to the time that you came out of the 8 sleeper. So say you get out of the sleeper at midnight. It doesn't even matter how many hours you drove before that. You get out of the sleeper at midnight and then you say you drive four hours and then you take a two hour break. To figure out what you would have left, after your two hour break, you would have 11 minus four. So you would have seven hours after the two hour break for your drive time. For your 14, you would just simply add 14 hours to midnight. So your 14 hour clock would be up at 1400 in the afternoon, two o'clock in the afternoon. It's gonna be different when you take the eight in the sleeper as your second break because that eight sleeper will pause your 14 hour clock. If you do eight in the sleeper first, you add 14 to the time in which you ended your sleeper break. 
Now, if you take your two-hour break first, and this is the part that confuses everybody, and I'm not exactly sure why, we get a 14-hour clock, and eight hours in the sleeper pauses that 14-hour clock. So what you're really essentially doing is you're adding the eight in the sleeper to the 14 clock, so you're actually adding 22 hours. So if you take your two-hour break first, you add 22 to the time you get out of the two-hour break. Say you got out of the two-hour break at midnight, you'd add 22 hours to that. So it would be 2200 would be the end of your 14-hour break. That would be 10 o'clock at night. That sounds like, oh, wait a minute, I'm getting out of the break at midnight and my 14 hour then ends at 2200 that's like 22 hours what the hell no what it is is in the middle of that break your second break is going to be an eight hour in the sleeper which pauses your 14 clock there's only three formulas you need to know 11 minus the time you drove between the breaks which is your drive time for determining your 14 hour break if your eight hour in the sleeper was first you simply add 14 to the time that you got out of the sleeper. To determine your 14 hour clock, if your two hour break is first, you simply add 22 to the end of the first break. That's it. People make this so confusing and it really isn't. Now you can do what I call rolling splits. So say you did two hours in the sleeper and then you drove and then you did eight in the sleeper and then you drove and then you did two off duty. Your clock will constantly give you time back as long as you're not exceeding that three hour window that we normally have between the 11 and the 14. That I think is kind of confusing for people but your on duty and your off duty time will affect your ability to do a rolling A2 split. Something that you should do first before you even attempt to do that is make sure you understand this first. If you wind up taking excessive amounts of on-duty time, like say you have an accident or you're on duty on the side of the road because you have a flat tire and you're waiting for road assist to come get you, that will affect your available drive time. It won't affect your 14-hour clock. The formulas I just gave you work if you're not taking excessive on-duty or off-duty time. I want to warn you that taking excessive on duty or off duty time could prevent a rolling 8 2 split. My suggestion is until you understand exactly how to do an 8 2 split alone by itself, do not attempt to try to do rolling 8 2s. This is kind of complicated. This is the easiest way that I can explain it though. How do I use this? This is the type of situation where perhaps I want to drive night instead of days because I like to drive at night. If I got time on a load, I will do eight in the sleeper at the customer, flip my clock, and then be able to roll out, have the same amount of hours that I had going into the customer, then drive, and then take a two hour and still get time back again after the two hour break. I also like to use this in the winter time when you're dealing real, with really bad weather for two reasons. Number one, I like to drive for five hours or so. Then I'll go lay down and take a two hour nap. Or even if I go and jump in the shower or something like that to get me away from the elements and the frustration and just the, the fatigue of having to fight that weather. The weather will make you tired. The fog will make you tired. And if you have to deal with weather and ice and snow in mountains, that will make you tired. I do it to alleviate my fatigue. Some people can't do that. Some people can't take naps. Like I'll be perfectly fine with taking a two hour nap, then jumping up and driving another five or six hours. And then I'll go back and lay down and grab something to eat and lay down and and you know go to sleep for the six or seven hours and get the full eight in the sleeper. And then I'll jump back up and drive another four or five hours or five or six hours, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Some people need that full 10 hour break, and with me, I'm already up, and the time is now ticking down. So, like, one of the worst things for me 
is for me to wake up and then have to wait four or five hours for my 10 hour clock to be back because that's five hours I've already been up and when I start driving and I'll get tired again I, it's just going to drive me crazy. I have a friend who called me up and he says I drove my full 11 clock and I just woke up and started my truck and I realized it says I have four hours on the clock and I don't understand why and I said because I'm going to guess you drove four hours into a customer you sat for two hours at a shipper then drove seven hours so you killed your whole 11 and now you stopped and you took your eight hours in the sleeper he's like yeah that's what happened unbeknownst to him it actually gave him back time earlier than he expected and he had to drive 120 miles and he was kind of stressed about it he wasn't sure how he was going to do it to make his time on his delivery but when he realized he got those four hours back two hours earlier than he expected it allowed him to open up more of a drive window so that he could make it without being stressed out i've done eight two splits and been so far ahead of other people one of the reasons is i use them like i said to drive at night you can run a lot more miles at night because there's no traffic another thing that when i was new that i used them for was parking say i was going to denver at the time i was afraid I wouldn't be able to find parking spots. So I would find the biggest locations. I would find Petros and TAs that had 300 parking spaces. I would say maybe drive five or six hours and I'd get to a place that had three or 400 parking spaces and I'd park way in the back so I knew I was going to have space. And then I would do the eight and the sleeper. Then I would go and leave out. By the time I needed to take the two hour break to get more time back, it would now be like, like five or six in the morning, which is when you start seeing spaces open up in the truck stops. You usually start seeing them starting to empty like 3 and 4 a.m. That allowed me to not worry about parking. In the reefer division at my company, you can't always just say, I'm going to drive on this certain schedule. It's hard to do. And we have deliveries in reefer at all different hours of the day and night. There is no set schedule. There is no, okay, we're only picking up and delivering between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. It doesn't work like that. Me knowing how to do this has allowed me to get more miles, to get places faster. It also impressed my fleet manager and my sales team enough that they know if I tell them the load can't be done, then the load can't be done because they know that I'm going to use every possible tool that I have to get my delivery made. That means they trust me. That means I'll get loads before other people. If somebody's just a screw up and they don't even know if the person's going to deliver on time because they're always wasting time, they're not going to give that person an important essential load, a priority load that needs to be delivered right away. I'm going to get that, which means I'm going to get more miles than them. So I hope this explains a little bit for you. I hope that maybe you can understand it a little bit better. If you need need me to explain anything or if you still have questions then comment down below and I'll try to answer as best I can but again do not try this unless you really have time on a load so you can see it in action I didn't have a Qualcomm picture to show you this at the moment or I would have thanks for watching like subscribe and share please I really appreciate all the hard work you guys have been doing to help me grow I know that you guys are sharing I know you're commenting I know you're liking so just keep it up I love it I'm so excited <laughs> so uh, I will be off for a couple days so I might be able to make some videos and just like stockpile them thanks again for watching trucking along with Kiersey and I hope to see you out here truck truck trucking along. Bye!